Hey everyone, and welcome. Today, we're gonna tackle one of those classic high stakes exam questions, the one about the liquidity trap. Now I know that term can sound a little intimidating, but trust me, by the end of this, you're not just gonna understand it, you're gonna absolutely master it. Okay, let's get right into it. This is the beast we're taming today. You'll see questions just like this on major exams, like the UPSC. And yeah, it looks like a lot, right? But what it's really asking is pretty simple. How does the economy behave in two totally opposite extreme scenarios? Our whole goal here is to pull this question apart piece by piece and show you exactly how to build that perfect A plus answer. Okay, first things first, before we can even touch those policy scenarios, we've got to lock down the absolute core concept. Seriously, everything, and I mean everything, hinges on this one key definition. So what exactly is a liquidity trap? Well, picture this. Interest rates have hit rock bottom. They're basically at zero. The central bank can't push them any lower. At this point, everyone starts thinking the same thing. Hey, rates can only go up from here. And if you know anything about bonds, you know that when interest rates go up, the value of old bonds goes down. So why would you buy a bond right now? You wouldn't. You just hold on to your cash and wait. And boom, that's the trap. The central bank's main tool, monetary policy, is suddenly useless. And this slide perfectly shows the two sides of the coin, these two opposite economic worlds we're operating in. On one side, you've got the Keynesian range. That's our liquidity trap. Money demand is perfectly elastic, a fancy way of saying people will happily hoard every single dollar you give them at that super low interest rate. Then, on the other side, you have the classical range. This is the complete opposite. Money demand is perfectly inelastic, which means people only hold cash to buy stuff, period. And interest rates, oh, they're super flexible, always moving up and down to keep everything humming along. All right, let's dive into scenario number one. We are deep in the liquidity trap. Now, if you're thinking about your ISLM model, this is the flat, horizontal part of the LM curve. And what does a flat line mean? It means the interest rate is stuck. It is not going anywhere, no matter what. And here's the headline for this scenario, the big takeaway. In a liquidity trap, fiscal policy is king. Government spending becomes incredibly powerful. So let's break down why that's the case. The real secret sauce here is in step three. Think about it. Normally, when the government spends a ton of money, it has to borrow. That competition for money drives up interest rates, right? And that crowds out private investment. But not here. In a liquidity trap, Everyone is already hoarding cash. So when the government comes along and says, hey, want to buy some bonds? People are like, sure. They don't need to be convinced with higher interest rates. The result? You get this amazing, pure boost from government spending without any of the negative side effects on private investment. It's a huge win for the economy. OK, time to flip the script completely. We're leaving the liquidity trap behind and jumping to the other extreme, the classical range. On our graph, this is the vertical part of the LM curve. And a vertical line means something really specific. The demand for money doesn't care at all about the interest rate. So in this world, nobody is hoarding cash, not a single person. You only hold what you need to buy your groceries and pay your rent. This totally changes the game. Fiscal policy suddenly becomes pretty much useless, but the central bank, well, it becomes all powerful. The logic here is super clean and direct. People only want to hold a certain amount of cash for their daily needs. So what happens if the central bank suddenly injects a bunch of new money into the system? Well, that extra cash becomes like a hot potato. Nobody wants to just sit on it. So what do they do? They rush to get rid of it by buying other assets, like bonds. All that demand for bonds sends their prices soaring and interest rates plummeting. And lower interest rates? That kicks off a massive wave of investment and the whole economy gets a huge boost. Okay, so we've got the theory down, we understand the two extremes, but knowing this stuff is one thing, getting top marks on an exam is another. So how do you turn all this knowledge into that perfect high scoring answer? Let's build it together step by step. Seriously, follow this guide to the letter. This isn't just a suggestion, it's a roadmap. It shows the examiner you're not just reciting facts, but that you are organized, logical, and you truly get it. Defined first, split it into two cases, draw neat diagrams, explain the why behind the shifts, and then stick the landing with a clear conclusion. It's a foolproof formula for success. You want to know how to get inside an examiner's head? Here's the secret. The difference between a good answer and an excellent one isn't the graph. Lots of people can draw a graph. The difference is the why. Clearly explaining why there's no crowding out, or why monetary policy is so potent in the other case, that's the golden ticket. 
That's what separates the great answers from the good ones and shows you have a deep, intuitive command of the material. And listen, don't for a second think this is just some old, dusty theory from a textbook. The idea of a liquidity trap is everything when it comes to understanding modern economics. We just use a new term for it now, the zero lower bound, or ZLB. It's the whole reason you hear about things like quantitative easing or QE. Those policies were literally invented to fight the effects of the ZLB after the 2008 financial crisis. So I'll leave you with a final thought to chew on. These concepts we've talked about today, they're not just for acing an exam. They are absolutely essential for making sense of the world around you. The next time you see a headline about central bank policy or about a new government stimulus plan, you'll know the deep economic logic behind it all. You'll understand what's really at stake.